Welcome back everyone to Caleb the Video Maker 2. This is going to be an on-screen video just talking about some of the different constraints we can apply to tables. I'm kind of just going with it right now, so I don't really have a whole lot planned. Thus, if my examples are kind of pretty awful, I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> The very first thing is I wanted to talk about some of the column level constraints. Essentially what that is, it's an attribute you apply to a column that changes what kind of data is allowed. This is referring to domain integrity. So let's just create a table and we are going to call this table parent and you'll see why in a minute. So the very first thing you're going to want to do when you create a table is create a primary key, which we've discussed in previous videos, but just as a refresher, you can do something like this and then give it a data type. We'll just give it int and then you say not null, and then primary key. So this int is a data type that restricts the type of data allowed in this column. That is the first layer of defense. Not null is another attribute we can apply that further restricts the type of data. So now we're not going to be able to insert nothing. We always have to insert a value for this column. And obviously the primary key is going to add the extra constraint of every value being unique. So this is an index, and we haven't really talked a whole lot about indexes, but indexes are an extremely important part of databases. And once you get the database design down, I'd say the next thing to learn are indexes. So when you create a primary key, you're automatically indexing this column. And what that means is that it's optimized to use this column for joins and for all kinds of different queries. Another thing you can do is just say unique. So if I run this, you can see it works, and this is going to make a unique constraint, which also is going to create an index. So let's go to the administer and then go to tables, table explorer, gonna give this a refresh, and there's our table right there. So we click that, go over here to indexes, and then there's a bunch of information about this index here. So I click that, and you can see this is a unique index. Now, if I go back to the SQL, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this table and then I'm gonna recreate this without that index. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to my tables, go back to my table, do a refresh, and you can see there is now no indexes on that table. So when we add the unique constraint, we're actually adding an index, very similar to adding a primary key, slightly different. The primary key actually determines the way the data is retrieved. So to see that, if we go to this table users, uh, let's go to the data here. So here's some data we had in the previous example. Often this is going to be sorted by the user ID. What that means is if you go and select something by the ID, it's very easy for the database to find it because it can just go to that number. Rather, if you selected something by, you know, the last name, well, it has to do a scan of the table. So I'm kind of getting a little bit off topic onto indexes, but they're extremely important. And essentially what I wanted you to know is that sometimes when we do a little column attribute here like unique, we're doing a little bit more than we might think. This is actually indexing our column. But I'm gonna go back to primary key. Now what I wanna do is create another table and teach you guys a little bit more about foreign keys. So we're going to say create table and we'll name this one child. And in here we are going to have a child ID so this will be int not null primary key. And we're also going to have a foreign key which references the parent. This will be of type int and I'm going to make it nullable which means I'm not going to use the not null keyword. And then what I do is I say references and then I put the table name parent and then in parentheses I am going to put the column name parent ID. Run that and you can, oh it failed. Why did it fail? I think it might be because of the names, so I will name this parent table, and then I will name this one child table for consistency. And down here, I will change this to parent table. Okay, create that table, and then create this table. Great, haha. <laughs> okay, I got it working, sorry. <laughs> so this creates a foreign key constraint. So now if we go into administer and then look at the tables, get rid of all this junk. Let's look for the child table. Give it a refresh. Child table right there. What we can do is go to the constraints and you can see we have a primary key and a foreign key. We're also going to have an index because we created a primary key. So if we go into this foreign key, we can get a little bit more information about it. And you can see on the delete, it's no action. On the update, it's no action. Meaning you're not able to delete the parent without deleting all the children manually yourself. Now you understand a little bit more about indexes, 
constraints and viewing that stuff inside of Data Server Manager. You can also go to Administer and look at all your constraints here. Obviously this is not going to be nearly as helpful because you didn't give your constraints fancy cool names like the rest of these in here, which you can do that if you want, just look up how to do that if you need. But until then, we're just not going to worry about it because I think we're doing very good. Thank you guys for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the content, and be sure to subscribe, like the video, and peace out.